I just want to remind everyone, there is a QR code for a evaluation. Uh, please use this QR code and uh, fill out an evaluation. Uh, this will help you get your uh, CME credits. So um, we save the best for last for, uh, from our uh, CME chair, Dr. Anup Shetty. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Archana Rao, who is a CME committee member and an EC member of TIPS and a DCMS uh, a member and a former board member of DCMS. So she will be introducing Dr. Anup Kumar Shetty. Thank you, Dr. Guti Goli. It is my honor today to introduce Dr. Anup Kumar Shetty. Um, he is a public speaker. He's a cancer survivor himself. He is a nephrologist, and we work together at Dallas Nephrology Associates. He also works at the Methodist Dallas Medical Center. His medical training is extensive. He trained, uh, of course, uh, from India. He was in Manipal at um, Manipal uh, University and then went on to do nephrology training in Mumbai and then on to Canada before he came here to the United States. Um, his journey has led him to be actually an expert in peritoneal dialysis and calciphylaxis. Uh, we refer to him all the time and seek his advice on these very unique conditions that affect our patient population. He's uh, assumed many leadership roles. He has been the past president of this very organization. He's also been endowed with prestigious awards, including uh, the Physician of the Year Award from TIPS, as well as the um, Greater Dallas Asian Chamber of Commerce Award in Medicine and Science. His most recent achievement is probably the most relevant to today's uh, symposium. He has published a book on the power of infinity, health, well-being, and an anti-cancer lifestyle. This is an excellent read. Um, I found that his unique perspective as a physician who went through a fairly significant illness, a cancer diagnosis, and came out uh, victorious and really has led his way to wellness is a nice way to uh, end this symposium which started off with a lot of preventative and other steps so really we would like to listen to him and this is a hopeful uh, you know kind of on a note we can end this symposium thank you Very nice. Very nice. thank you Archana for a nice introduction and thank you all for staying back I del deliberately put myself as the last speaker, uh, just so that we can be nice to other speakers. Uh, but, um, and I want to thank, before I forget, thanks to Amit for asking me to uh, kind of help with this. And thanks to all the TIPS board and uh, committee members. Um, and. I have a few more thanks to do before I start the talk. <laughs> thanks to Minal, Trishna, Snehal. They helped us uh, organize this behind the desk. And our AV team, Sudish, Ame, and Ulysses. Thank you. And thanks to the hotel for a beautiful hall. Now, um, nephrology is giving an oncology talk. So uh, it's going to be a little bit um, emotional talk and there will be some you know, I will try to make it scientific. The, I don't have any disclosure. I'm, I work for DNA and uh, all those things are part of DNA. So, I was taught very early in my career to start with a case presentation. So, this is a 41 years old male of Indian origin who presented with the altered bowel movements. Uh, of about three months duration uh, and there was no weight loss, there was no bleeding per rectum and uh, examination was normal except that the rectal exam was painful and the GI doctor's finger had blood in it. So he thought it was uh, inflammatory bowel disease and uh, he suggested colonoscopy and the patient is me. So, uh, and colonoscopy showed uh, a mass in the rectum. So he didn't believe uh, because he was also not expecting a cancer and uh, he actually called the colorectal surgeon, Dr. Manga, to look at it before he woke me up. Um, and he told me it's a polyp and I was, uh, I was drugged uh, under sedation so it didn't occur to me that it was cancer. 
because he said there is a 40% chance that it is cancer. And um, that was the picture. And um, see, nephrologists, we know that we can get the BAPS report in four hours. So as long as we do the BAPS by noon or even one o'clock, we are able to get the light microscopy report uh, same day, end of the day, latest by next day morning. So I knew that I could get the report next day without waiting for two weeks. So nine o'clock next day, I called the pathologist because that's what we do to get kidney biopsy results. He was very nice to me and he said, uh, you know, I have not looked at it, I'll look at it and will call you. And um, of course he knew that, you know, pathologists don't give the report. So at around 10.30, I got a phone call from my GI doctor saying that I have cancer. So the reason I am saying this is, this is not how news is normally given, but uh, uh, being a physician, it kind of helped me also to know the diagnosis right away. Uh, and uh, so within 24 hours, I got the report and now I had to start working. You know, previous night I was on call and um, 24 hours later I'm a cancer patient. So, um, I don't know if Sumit is here. Sumit is a good friend of mine. So we had a lot of friends get together and um, uh, one thing I told them is that I want to lead my life like nothing happened. So I don't want you all to send me food every day. Don't come to my house every day. I'll, I'll call when I need you. So, uh, because I really, I thought that's the best way to rehab me. So, uh, but I got the, um, I had to choose the oncologist. Okay. So, first 24 to 48 hours, what went on in my mind was, I was 41 and I owed to my family to, to live. And, sorry, so I needed to pick the best doctor, I needed to go to the best hospital to give me the best chance to survive. So what occurred to me is, um, you know, I'm a cricket fan, all the Indians know cricket, cricket is not baseball, uh, but um, all Indians breathe cricket, we know cricket. And uh, the people from my age, you all know 1983 World Cup, where uh, India won the World Cup. So, for some reason I thought of Kapil Dev, the captain, and um, how he led and won the Cup for India. So, I built a team around me without knowing that I was doing it. So, I wanted to go to the best place that I could get to. And, uh, you know, we all know MD Anderson. Um, being the premier institute for the whole world and uh, I, I was grateful that we are not far from Houston and I also have a sister who lives there so it makes it easier. So I picked the best oncologist in town, I picked a best oncologist in MD Anderson and, uh, and I saw the surgeon within two weeks actually, I saw the surgeon in MD Anderson on day 13 or 14 of diagnosis. Uh, generally we say, you know, few weeks of uh, delay in care does not matter, but being a physician myself, being a scientist, I knew that cancer cells grow every day and why let it grow every day? You know, I, I wanted the treatment right away. And, and thankfully, I was able to start chemotherapy within two weeks. Okay. And uh, so the philosophy here is play it as though it's your last game of your life. Play it like a World Cup uh, game where you have only one game to fight. So build the best team and uh, you know try to get the best outcome. I also realized that surgeons don't like to reoperate. And chemotherapy doesn't work, second line chemotherapy doesn't work as well as first line chemotherapy. So that's why I needed to go to the best surgeon, I needed to go to the best 
medicine. Some of my physician friends did question what I did. He said, uh, they said, you know, it's, we all have access to same medicine. Why do you have to go to different places? Thankfully for me, it was a time when the treatment was kind of changing. And uh, my background is peritone dialysis and I happened to work in a center of excellence. And even today I can't do things that I was able to do during my training. So I knew that center of excellence does things a little differently. And I was hoping that that was the case in MD Anderson too. So one of the first things my oncologist in uh, MD Anderson, who actually was gracious enough to just call me even without seeing me, without knowing me, he said, you know, chemotherapy is changing and its auxiliary platinum is not yet approved for early colon cancer, but you need to get that. And thankfully I found an oncologist here who was willing to prescribe me that. Second thing he said is don't get as much as possible, don't have a permanent colostomy. Okay. And uh, I, indeed I was able to get both those but I'm left with incontinence but I don't have colostomy. Okay. And I was able to get oxaliplatin before it was approved for early disease. I don't know if that played a role, but I think everything played a role a little bit and I'm here in front of you 16 years later. Thank you. Now, second part is when you have cancer, you know that you are at risk for cancer and I thought maybe I'm at risk for other cancers too. And uh, one of the family members, he said, Anu, one thing I just suggest you is never ask why. And I tried my best not to ask that question. But, you know, looking back, my grandma lived till 102. Why me? My, my father lived till 96. Mother lived till 88. So, I was not willing to accept that I don't know why I had cancer. So, that led to a lot of, lot of introspection. Some are logic, some are pure science. But, why do we get sick? If you really want to simplify illnesses, there are only two things, either cells die or too many cells multiply. Okay. Almost every illness in the world, you can come back to these two things. One of the two things. So cancer is a disease where there is an uncontrolled growth of cells. And again because of one of the two things. Either because there is a stimulus or too much of stimuli or there is lack of inhibitors of cell growth. Now, so, that comes to a stimulus, okay, or a bunch of stimuli, which do the same thing. So, anything wrong that have any stimulus has to fall under one of the five categories. This is uh, actually Ayurveda, but it's science. Everything in the world is either solid or liquid or fire or air or space. Okay? Our body has these five elements and our universe has these five elements. So when there is a harmony between these two, we are in wellness. When there is a disharmony, there is some trigger somewhere that either cells die or cells grow. So, so the cancer has to, like if you trace back cancer, you can always trace it to one of the five things. And so the one of the objectives of today's talk is to review AICR guidelines for cancer prevention. AICR stands for American Institute of Cancer Research. 
But this talk has already been given today. You have heard this all day. Okay? So, it's again food, healthy liquid, that is no soda, no sugary drinks, no sweeteners, no alcohol. You heard that. Healthy air, so no unhealthy air, that is no smoking. Okay. And fire is stress and, you know, managing stress, internal stress, external stress. So how do you deal with that? You heard about meditation, you heard about some yoga practice. Thank you, Dr. Shroff. That was wonderful. And the space. Space is you. Space around you. Surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with good wives. So, and all these things go back to those five elements. I'm going to, I made my presentation shorter because we are lagging behind, or we are behind time. And most of what I wanted to talk has already been spoken. But, one thing that I do want to, so this is the five elements we are talking about and on the right side is the five pillars that life medicine, lifestyle medicine experts talk about and, and pretty much the same thing. If you want to take a picture, then okay. Now AICR unfortunately didn't cover stress, sleep and human connection relationships. You heard about stress, you heard about sleep. And now I'm talking about human connection and you all. So, we talk too much about genes. Genes are something that you cannot modify. But you heard from more than one speaker that genes don't determine your destiny most of the times. Okay? Genes determine your destiny when it's Disease is related to one gene or one gene abnormality, like hemophilia, for example. But most of the polygenic disorders, they don't determine your destiny entirely. What determines your de destiny is what else is going on to make those gene abnormalities become disease. And that's where the lifestyle changes come into play. That's, why, that's where all the five elements come into play. And that's why I'm trying to make a case that most cancers are preventable and most cancers are lifestyle related. It takes lifetime of lifestyle changes though. We can't wake up late and decide that I'm going to make all the changes. There is value, to, it's never too late to make lifestyle changes, but we need to teach our kids to follow a healthy lifestyle. So I gave a lecture to my son the other day that I said, you know, what you make now, he's 24, what you do now, you're going to experience 20 years from now. It's too late for me. I mean, it's not too late, but it's, I missed some time. So AACR actually agrees that nearly half of the cancers are preventable. Now one other thing that I'm not going to touch upon is the cancer screening. Some of the cancer screenings are preventive measures. Some of the cancer screenings are, they, they alter the outcome. They help you diagnose cancer early and treat it early. Colon, colon cancer screening is one of the perfect examples of preventive screening. You go for colonoscopy, get the polyps removed, there are no polyps to become cancer. That was a beautiful picture from uh, Rupa. I want to copy that somewhere. So, so colon, uh, since my diagnosis, I must, have spent, I must have sent at least 500 patients for colonoscopy. And I've had a few early diagnoses of cancers. But I've had many who have had polypectomy. So many cancer survivors, or some, they say that, look, this is the best thing that happened to me. I'm a different person today. I don't say that. And I struggled for many years what good came out of my cancer. In the book, it occurred to me that I sent 500 people for colonoscopy. So I think I prevented some cancers. Okay? And that book is again an attempt to reach more people to prevent cancer. 
and uh, Dr. Agarwal who has done a lot of research and he has this review article which is few years old but still relevant but he makes a very bold statement that cancer is a preventable disease and I agree with him. So this is a picture, I, I just uh, copied this picture from Dr. Agarwal's article, except that wheel, I hope it turns around. Okay, yeah. So there is a constant interaction between the environment and the genes, and, and that is what is epigenetics is, and what makes the genetic abnormality manifest as a disease, and that is where the environmental factors come into play. I'll skip these. So gene is your just destiny, but what gene does is not. Okay? So gene we cannot change, but what gene does, to a large extent we have control over that. So take charge of that. When we move from one part of the world to another part of the world, we don't carry the risks. Actually we acquire the risks that is associated in with living in that new place. That is telling you that environment matters. Okay. Identical twins of breast cancer patients, only 20% develop cancer. So again, trying to make a point that gene is destiny but what gene does is not. So now I, I'll quickly go over ten things that AICR suggested. These are the lifestyle choices that they address. One is be lean. I'll go fast because obesity is associated with a lot of cancers. Okay. And we know the association between smoking. We talked about alcohol, about zero alcohol. Tricia Petzold, I, I don't know her, but I read about her. She said cancer prevention happens in the kitchen. And uh, Dr. Bali Reddy, I don't know if you're here. Can we do this? Um, I think we can. Okay. We need to communicate with our patients and we need to do it honest to ourselves. Okay. I, have been, I have been spending a lot of time with my patients on their lifestyle and um, one of the things I recently had to analyze some data for something that some project that I had uh, so one of the things is I had 19 patients lose about 10 and a half pounds per year over a duration of three years in these patients now this by name no means it was not a properly done study but I was just curious and I had gathered this information and um, you know I live in South, I practice in South Dallas where there is a lot of obesity and uh, at least I was able to help a lot of people lose weight and I will tell you shortly what I tell them. Okay. Now I will complete these recommendations. ASCR suggests uh, at least two 30 minutes of exercise. I say do it one hour. It doesn't, you don't have to go to gym, do walking and um, I'm fortunate I have two dogs. So dogs love to walk. So if you don't walk them, they make you feel guilty. Because uh, at 9 p.m. my both dogs come to me asking, when are we walking? So, so they help me walk and I would suggest you have a dog and make them walk every day. And you get exercise. Obesity, I'll skip this. Third, uh, avoid sugary drinks, avoid sweeteners too. Earlier one of the speakers talked about that. The way I explain to my patients is we need to rewire our brain, rewire that sweet is a celebration. And if you want to rewire your brain, you need to take away everything that is sweet, except I make exception that you can have fruits. Okay? If you are not a diabetic, have generous amount of fruits. If you are a diabetic, 
have one or two fruits a day, low glycemic fruits like apples and berries. But otherwise, don't use sweetener and stay away from sugar. And I tell all, at least all Indians, actually pretty much all patients, I say treat yourself as though you're a diabetic. There's nothing good in sweets, you're sweet enough and don't have more sweets. <laughs> Fourth recommendation, generous amount of vegetables, whole grains, legumes. We, um, in 2013 and 14 and 15, uh, we had a childhood obesity prevention campaign by TIPS. And there we had a 5210 campaign, which said five vegetables or fruits per day, two hours or less of screen time per day, at least one hour of exercise, zero sugary drinks. I have changed a little bit since then. I have increased it to seven vegetables and fruits per day. It's hard to eat seven servings of vegetables per day. So what I do is I, I make smoothie in the morning. I put two, serving, two to three servings of uh, greeny organic vegetables, two to three fruits, and some nuts and uh, I get this organ, organic plant-based protein so I put a scoop of that and put a bunch of water. Key in smoothie is you have to put a lot of water otherwise you can't drink. If it becomes gooey you cannot drink. So that's my breakfast every day. So I get f at least five servings right in the morning. So, but you can figure out your own way but get lots of vegetables. There is, a, there is another diet to the list of diets, it's called Play-Doh. It's plant dominant. PLA comes from plant, DO comes from dominant. Uh, I came home, I learned about this from a nephrology colleague of mine. So I tell all my patients, you don't have to be become, you don't have to become pure vegetarian, especially in Texas, people say, Dr. Shetty, how can I not have meat? So I say, you know, you don't have to become vegetarian, just eat a bunch of vegetables, a lot of vegetables every day. The, so that's kind of a standard plate. This I copied, but what I tell, I draw a plate in, I have an instruction sheet for every patient who comes to the clinic. So I draw a plate and I draw a line which is two-third one side and one-third one side. I said on the two-third side, fill it with whatever vegetables you like. Now when we say vegetables, some patients don't understand, they think plant, uh, salad is not vegetable. So I make a specific mention that salad counts as vegetable. I say you cook, you cook or do, eat vegetable, whichever you like, but eat a lot of vegetables. And leave less space in your plate to put unhealthy stuff. Okay. okay. Limit red meat, I'm going to go fast. Limit consumption of salty food. How are we doing with time? I was time keeping for others. Okay. <laughs> so limit salt, limit, that's okay. So AICR says you can have some alcohol. I said don't drink alcohol. And Somebody talked about supplements. Supplements don't work for cancer prevention. Actually, I talked to my oncologist in uh, MD Anderson. Uh, you know, that was a time turmeric was hot and it's still hot. And they were trying to do some trials. And I asked him, Dr. Ajani, what about this turmeric? He said cancer cells are very smart, you know, and you can't prevent cancer with one intervention. So if you do one, they'll find other ways to multiply. So there is no single supplement that works to prevent cancer, but uh, that's why you need to really eat whole food, real food. And AICR recommends that don't use supplements, that's good. Breastfeeding is good. And most important than cancer, Patients also have to prevent cancer. It's not just for those who have not had cancer. Okay. 
and uh, don't smoke, no tobacco. So coming back to summarizing my talk, have a healthy plant dominant diet, drink water. I tell my patient only healthy drink is water, but you can make smoothie, but don't put, don't make it complicated, don't put milk in smoothie, you don't have to get uh, tender coconut water, just put water, make it thin enough for you to drink comfortably. And so I put two vegetables, I mean two to three vegetables and two to three fruits and you know you can put little turmeric, little ginger, little black pepper, whatever you like, but you know put different things different days so over time it kind of averages out and don't smoke and um, do some yoga, meditation, laughter, exercise, sing or dance or do something that to be in bliss and be in good company. If you like reading, read. I like to read. I like to write. I'm hoping to write more books. So, and appropriate cancer screening. And I will skip this. Now, so finally, I do want to go back to that slide. Sorry. We, we hear about um, believe in yourself and uh, Dr. Perry talked about the self, realizing the self when you do this, um, you know, yoga. The, what she was actually telling you was, one minute, okay. I, I think I will uh, Uh, this might sound spiritual, but I will try not to make it uh, or Okay. So, so what was that self that she, she was talking about? That's, uh, she was asking, who am I? Okay. So when I carry this uh, phone, I say this is my phone, right? When I say this is my phone, phone is not me. Phone can never be me, right? What is mine can never be me. Now this is my hand, these are my hands. With the same analogy, this is my body. What is mine cannot be me. So this body is not me. Now let's go to my mind. Again it's my mind, right? So. Mind cannot be me. So I'm the, you know, Usha said, witness. I'm the witness to my mind. I'm the witness to my body. That is the self. That's the infinite self. And, and in sports, you hear, you know, do your best, express yourself. If you really see the, the winning team and losing team, often the difference is very little. It's the person who can witness the body and let go. They are the ones who become the champions. So that's what by doing all this yoga, meditation, prayer, singing, dancing, we are trying to be in that self. We are trying to be in that flow. We are trying to be in that infinity to uh, unveil that infinite power. You can call it in any name you like. And that was the part of survival for me. With that, I want to summarize. Uh, okay, this I just made up. So, we all know 007, James Bond. So I started with 007 and then I, there, I had more zeros and more sevens. <laughs> so 
with zero sodas or any drinks with sugar, sweeteners or alcohol. Uh, I, I guess I can remove the second zero if I put alcohol in the first one, but zero alcohol, zero smoking, seven servings of vegetables and fruits per day, seven hours of exercise per week, so one hour per day, and seven hours or more of yoga, meditation, recreation, singing, reading, dancing, laughing, prayer, anything you like. It sounds like one hour per day is a lot, but many of us realized during COVID pandemic that we have time. We just didn't know that we had that time. So if you commit to yourself, we have that time. Okay, the next seven is seven or more hours of sleep per day that you heard today, and seven hours or more of screen-free time per week. Amit said seven is too little. It is, but I have stolen two more hours from day uh, of doing exercise, meditation, all those. And that is also no screening time. So in reality, it's three hours per day. So, so that is the 007777 for you. And feel free to take pictures. And this is also my way of summarizing my, uh, summarizing the whole day. And, uh, and be happy. You know, when kids are, kids are always happy. Kids never, they don't need a reason to be happy. They, when they cry, they cry for a reason. They cry if their diaper is wet. They cry if they're hurting. They cry if they're hungry. But otherwise they're always happy. For some reason, when we grow up, we look for reason to be happy. So we need a reset button to get back to that life, to be unconditionally happy, happy without a reason. And uh, those are my two dogs in the bottom. If you have a dog, they bring a lot of good stuff. Thank you all. Any questions? Any questions? Well, what can you say after such a great uh, talk and uh, story? Well, thank you, Dr. Shetty. <laughs> thank you, Amir. Thank you all. Thank you again, everyone. Please fill out the evalu evaluations, and um, you will get instructions about the CME uh, credit, how, how you can get it. And uh, thank you again for attending and staying till the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.